Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. Welcome to this Sunday morning service. It is a special day today. Does anybody know what day it is today besides Sunday? It is Mother's Day. Amen. Let's give the moms a round of applause and a hand clap. Praise God. We thank God for them. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you've checked in on our uh, video streams. It's good to have everybody here that's in the house of the Lord present amongst us. And uh, if you're a first-time guest, we welcome you. And we will recognize you a little bit later in the service. So just a couple of quick announcements that we don't typically make on the top of the hour, but we're going to do so now. Um, we want the children, if you're here with the children, they're going to remain in the service through a video presentation. So we'll have the praise and worship like we do a little bit later. We'll have a video presentation after the video presentation before Pastor John comes up. Um, the kids can be dismissed with the Sunday school teachers to go to the back, okay? Second video. I'm sorry, there are two videos. So the very last one. So praise and worship team, then the video. So if you remember that video, okay? Also, just for you parents, too, and the kids that are in the, uh, in the congregation right now, the playground is closed uh, today, right? There's been some construction out there, so from, for safety issues, um, that is closed down for today. So please be mindful of that. And, uh, well, let's pray. Let's open with prayer and uh, get this thing kicked off for the, for the glory of God. Father, we thank you for a great day today. We thank you for your many, many blessings in our life, the opportunity to gather in your house to enjoy one another's fellowship and company and to lift up and magnify your name. God, we pray for our moms today. Lord, you let us spend nine months with them, Lord God, in their womb while we kicked them and we elbowed them, Lord, throughout that time. And we thank you, Lord, for the times when they put that Band-Aid on our knee or they wiped that tear from our eyes or they brought us to that practice or maybe they even chastened us with your love, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you for them and what they mean to us in our lives. We ask you to bless them today, give them a very special day, and let them know, God, that we love them and appreciate them very much. And we pray these prayers today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's stand, let's move about, greet one another these next few minutes, and um, oh, greet one another with a heavenly hug and kiss in Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, young people, children, kids, memory verses, come on down. Okay, who has memory verses? Just about everyone. Okay, great. Start with you, Leanna. Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. My name is Marcelina, and I'm here to share with you 2 Peter 1, verses 1 through 11. <laughs> um, a si Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in abundance with our knowledge of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Confirming one's calling and election, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who have called us in his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in this world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and a self-control perseverance, and a perseverance godliness, and a godliness mutual affection, and a mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have these are nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to claim your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 1, verses 1 through 11. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. My name is Landon, and I'm going to share with you today 2 Peter 1, verses 12 through 21. So I will remind you of these things, even though you know them, and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory because as long as I live in this tent, in this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will remember these things. and are following cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ in power, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received, he received honor and glory um, from God the Father, and the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well. We ourselves we ourselves 
heard a voice from heaven. When we went up the mountain, no. We we also have the prophetic message of something that is completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it. As to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of some of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets the human spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 1 verses 12 through 21. Prophecy and scripture. Let your light shine. Matthew 5, verse 16. All things come from him. All things are directed by him. All things are for his praise. May God be given in glory forever. Amen. Romans 11, verse 36. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be... Tremble or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 9. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you, and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Let his face turn towards you and give you peace. Numbers 6 24 through 26. The Lord your God is with you. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Very good job, everyone. Just in case none of you adults have ever sat up here and had to do a verse of a scripture, just want to remind you something, and Landon, this may help you too. One of the natural things about humanity is when we get nervous, we forget. And then when we forget, we get more nervous. So then we forget more. We know you knew a whole lot more than that. It's just nerves. But don't worry. The first time I got up to speak, my knees were knocking. But thank you for your effort. Let's ask the Lord's blessing. So it's very hard. It takes a lot of courage for them to get up here. And a lot of time to measure it, memorize these scriptures. So good job, everyone. So no worries. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the many, many blessings you give us, Lord. We thank you for the blessing of these young people, for they are truly, Lord, your people. You have your eye upon them. You care for them, Lord. And the heart of children are very precious in your sight. I pray, God, that you keep them safe, that you put your hand upon them, that you let these words that they've committed to their hearts, Lord, be sown up in their hearts, to grow into their soil of their being, Lord, and bring forth much fruit to your glory and to the glory of the people in this world that need to see your glory through them. In Jesus' name. And the church say, amen, amen. Thank you. We're going to worship the Lord with our giving. All right. Good morning, family. And good morning, moms, and happy Mother's Day, above all. So this is part of the service where ushers, please, uh, we give back a portion to God what he has truly given to us, and we should always be grateful. And let's give, and give cheerfully. And those in Zoom land, you know, you can do the same as well as the give a fly, is what it's called. I always kind of mess, mess it up a little bit. But. And again, I just want to say again to all the mothers that are out here, uh, happy Mother's Day. You know, in God's word, in this gospel, always there, there are different 
phrases and, and verses that all reflect different um, things towards moms. But in, in, in searching through it, the one that kind of really stuck out was 1 Thessalonians 2, um, verse 7, how, you know, Paul is trying to talk to the people of Thessalonica and giving them hope. But he does say to them that he says that, you know, that just as a nursing mom cares for his children, we care for you. And, and it's just amazing how he says a nursing mom, how a mother will do whatever it takes. And again, he's also referring to them, we'll do whatever it takes to help you, lead you to the Lord. He's not looking for praises for himself or his ministry. He's looking for praises from God in doing what he's been set out to do. You know, moms stand out in such a way that a lot of times I know you are taken for granted. But there, there's a story back in, um, in the uh, Great Depression, how a, a child, well, this one family, all they had to eat was just apples and whatever the father could catch out as far as wild game was concerned. So when the father came home with a squirrel, the first thing the mom said, please give me the head. The head has, is so much meat and is so, much, is so delicate, I want it. But it wasn't until the daughter got much older that she realized then that there was no meat in the head. But that was mom's self-sacrificing way to make sure that the children had, even though it was hard to eat squirrel, they still had food to eat, more than what she had. That's just an example of what our mothers do. Again, like David said, the nine months they, did, did, they, they went through to carry us. You know, let us honor them this very day in everything because they've given up everything. They serve us in so many different ways. They care for us. And the children, when they're hurting, they're nursing them back. When they when they're, can't sleep at night, who's the first one at their bedside? The moms. So let's honor them this very day because they are truly special, and they are special in God's eyes. Gentlemen. And Marcelina, thank you for that verse there, 1 Peter uh, 2, verse 1 through 11. That's a tough one. And we've been studying that on the Thursday night lesson. So when my turn comes around on the 19th, we're going to go on the next uh, few verses of that uh, message. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to give back a portion to you of what you've provided for us. We thank you for the due diligence and the determination that the children put forth and study in your word. And thank you for the parents that take the time to help the children in going through the memorizing of your word. We also just want to say thank you for our praise and worship team as they bring forth songs of praise to you, Lord God, and the message that you're going to give to Pastor John. But it's a day also that we set aside for the moms. Lord, they're special in so many ways. Though you created man first, but you took a portion of man and made woman from it. And from that, there is so much love that they give and so self-sacrificing in so many ways that, Lord, this is just only one day. We should honor them every day of the year. Amen. So we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. And now we're going to have a video a tribute to the moms as well.
for our mothers. Big hand. Come on now. Shake the rafters. We have a lot. They're all beautiful moms. Praise God. And he, he knows how to make things, doesn't he? Praise God. God is good. Okay. So in that line of thinking, um, we have a Mother's Day celebration after service, so if you're able to attend that, please make your way to the back, and we will celebrate our moms. Praise God. Just a couple of reminders, Thursday night, midweek service, 7 p.m. Be here if you're able. We have a great time. We always learn something new out of those, uh, out of those Bible studies. 
And then just a reminder for every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, we gather right here, right about in this spot right here, a big circle. This is an anointed place, so if you need something, you might want to walk through here. But uh, actually, God's everywhere, so you can, get a, you can get a touch over there. You can get a touch back there. There's just a little extra something special right here. That's all. So anyway, so praise God for that. Um, well, with that, um, just a reminder again about the playground. It's closed. But hey, we want to welcome our guests that are here today. So we're going to take our time with this. Uh, you know, we gather here for those that are first-time visitors because we feel something in this place. Because there is a God that has reached down and saved us, that has touched our lives, that has changed us, that has made us whole. And you know, the scripture says that we're all sinners. We've all come short of his glory. There's none righteous, not one, except God, Jesus Christ himself. So we thank him for that, and that's why we're here to lift him up, and we're glad to have you uh, in the house. So without further ado, as I call your name, if you would like to stand, please do so we can recognize you. Just wave your hand so we can see where you are and welcome here. Well, I want to welcome Chris and Anna Lang. Chris and Anna right there in the middle. Thank you for coming. And uh, they heard about us on the radio, so praise God. I would imagine that might have been the bridge, possibly. Good to have you. Thank you for being listeners. Praise God. Okay, we have Romy McPherson and Kate Chapman, mother and daughter. Welcome. Good to have you in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. We're having fun. We're having fun. Mary Lou Astoy also heard from us on the radio. Mary Lou, there you go. <laughs> Good to have you, Mary Lou. Our pastor's wife is Mary Lou, too. Beautiful name. Not to be confused. Okay. And she also heard on the radio, too. So praise the Lord. If I get this wrong, forgive, but I believe we have Wes's mom, Yvette Liberto, here with us today. Yvette, God bless. Good to have you. Welcome. And we have Taylor Dill here with Brandy. Taylor in the back. Praise God. And who's this young lady sitting behind Rhonda that we have? All right. Good to have you, Grandma. <laughs> Good to have you in the house of the Lord. Praise God. That's it. Okay. Well, we say here that the first time... You're a visitor, but after that, you're part of the family, so we hope we have you. We hope to see you here again, and you enjoy the presence of the Lord. And this praise and worship team works hard to bring uh, glory to God through music and their voice and their instruments. So let's stand together, and let's worship God with them as we lift up and magnify His holy name. Praise God. Um, God is good. Um, the first one we're going to sing is called Battle Belongs because the battle belongs to him and we fight in our knees. We don't fight in the battle. We fight on our knees because it is his battle. Amen. Amen.
Glory to God. Glory to God.
thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the face presses face presses go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he's with you he's with you be the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he's for you 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 he's for
people go through life without worship I just it is such a source of strength what oh I'm sorry we have a video first so we'll let the video come up oh thank you Ron so we got a video for you to share first so I think they got it keyed up right this is a true life story some of you guys that know WWF will know who this is those of you who don't watch it it's a WWF guy he's famous Let's hit the video. My mom would be at all my sporting events. Let's say I was playing football, okay? My mother would be on the sidelines, and if the play on the field started going one way, my mother would run along like, Mike, get him, get him! I'd be like, oh my gosh. I'd get in the huddle with the other guys, they go, Mark, is that your mother? I go, no, I never saw her before in my life. <laughs> the greatest gift my mother ever gave me, she believed in me. I have overdosed on drugs on three occasions where I should have been dead. But I believe I was kept here for a reason. You show me your friends, I will show you your future. How do I know this? I hung out with losers and I became the biggest loser of them all because I gave up everything I dreamt about as a little boy because of who I chose to surround myself with. My friends would drive me home at two, three, four in the morning. We'd be drunk and high, laughing in the car. We pull up in front of my house in New York. They go, Mark, Mark, the light's on. I go, oh man, my mother's up. See, my mom wouldn't go to bed until she knew her son was still alive. I'd walk in, she'd say, hi, Mark, how was your night? I go, it was good, mom, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, mom, I'm tired, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, Mark, I haven't seen you all day and all night. Can I please talk to you? I said, man. Just leave me alone, you bug me. I'd slam my bedroom door on the one person who believed in me. I was on a worldwide tour and we were wrestling overseas in Japan. After my wrestling match, I went upstairs in my hotel room and I fell asleep. There was a knock at my door at three o'clock in the morning. I got out of bed and I looked through the safety window and I could see it was a Japanese promoter. So I opened the door and he said, Mark, you need to call home, there's been an emergency. I went and got on the hotel room phone. I called back to the United States and said, hey, what's going on? They said, Mark, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, just tell me what happened. All of a sudden they started crying. They go, Mark, I can't tell you. I said, just say it. They said, Mark, your mother died. I just threw the phone down. I ran out of my hotel room. I took the elevator to the lobby and when the doors opened up, I just ran out into the street. I mean, there was no cars, there was no people. It's three o'clock in the morning. And I walked down the middle of a street in Hiroshima, Japan. And I remember looking up and just saying, Mom, I am so sorry. I flew home for her funeral and I was so nervous to walk up to her casket. So I just stood way in the back. And I kept looking from a distance. I kept thinking to myself, wake up please get up and then I finally got the nerve to walk up to her and as I got closer I could see my mom for the first time I mean she was so beautiful she she was dressed in white I mean she looked like an angel and I just stood over and I said mom you are my hero everything I am everything I hope to be was because of you you loved me so much, you gave me a life. You're the only one that ever believed in me. How did I repay her? By getting drunk, by getting high, by getting stupid, by hanging out with losers, for what? All she ever wanted to do was talk to me. 
I wish I could talk to you now, Mom. I wish you could see what I'm doing. Why couldn't I have been a better son? We are defined by our choices. But if you surround yourself with people involved in drugs and alcohol and pills, it's a dead end. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to tell you I lived that life. It leads to broken hearts, broken relationships, broken dreams, and death. For what? To get high? If you have a mother or a father, when you go home, tell them how much you love them. See, my whole life was about being rich and famous. I had to be a millionaire. I had to win the race. I had to win the race to expense my marriage, my family, my friends for what? To be all alone in the world? I learned what is truly important, and that is how precious this gift of life is and our families and how quickly it can be taken away. See, I no longer live in time. I live in moments. See, it's not what's in your pocket that matters. It's what's in your heart that truly matters. Love, love is just a word until somebody comes along and gives it meaning. You, you're the meaning. It's a good video. The um, Bible teaches us that, you know, honor is really the currency of heaven. Um, it's the way we access God. It's the way we access people. And um, we begin to learn that in the beginning with our family. Mother's Day is a modern tradition. Um, we've been celebrating the Lord's Table for over 2,000 years. Passover has been celebrated for over 3,200 years. Mother's Day has been celebrated 106 years. So the fact that it's that modern tells you that something shifted in our society, that there was something prior to that 106 years where mothers were, are natu were naturally venerated, respected. In my short window of life, I can remember how different it was just being raised. I was not ever allowed to sp talk what was called talk back to an adult. If my neighbor was to scold me or say something, we were not allowed to call them by their first name. It was, you know, Mrs. Smichetti or, you know, Mr. Smichetti. We would always, you know, have to teach everybody respect and honor. And that it really is a biblical principle, and God cares about how we honor people. In fact, it's been said, and I believe it to be true, that whether you succeed in life or whether you fail, regardless of what it is that you venture to do, it will always, always be directly connected to who you chose to dishonor or who you chose to honor. And it's definitely something that shapes your destiny and your path and one of the reasons God considers it so important that we learn it. I'm not going to read the scripture, but in the Old Testament law, the Bible says if you have a child and they're rebellious and stubborn and you discipline them and they refuse to behave, under the law, you are obligated to take that child by the hand with its mother, go out to the gates where basically the elders were, Turn the child over to the elders and tell the elders, my child is stubborn, rebellious, and will not be corrected. And the Bible says you are to leave him there, and the community will stone the child to death. Now, that's pretty harsh. And thank God we don't live in those days. I would not be your pastor today. I would have already been stoned. But we live in a time of mercy and a time of grace a time where God is available to us. So when we read the scriptures, we have to understand how important it is to God that we do give honor to our mothers and our fathers. But today is a day that we're focusing on the moms. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, and it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise. The promise says, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life in the earth. Because quite frankly, back then, if you didn't honor your mother and father, you didn't live very long. First Timothy 5, 4, it says, but if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should learn first of all 
to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. 1 Timothy 5, 8, it says, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. These are extremely strong statements by God. First of all, we take in the Old Testament where God was giving a prescription to put children that were rebellious to death. And then we have here in the New Testament where it says that if a man doesn't provide for his family, that he's worse than an unbeliever. Now, I've spent a number of years studying the scriptures and theology, and I love theology, but I can't pretend to tell you that I understand what it means to be worse than an unbeliever. Because the Bible tells us that unbelievers are not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Unbelievers are going to go into the lake of fire. So I can't even fathom what is worse than going into the lake of fire. But that is the level that God raises this subject matter. It's that important to him. Now, many of us, in many, many different ways, as we get older, our mothers get older too. And as they age, there are certain things that come with age. Landon, if you think memory's tough at your age, wait till you're our age. <laughs> it gets harder and it becomes more difficult. Things that you, you don't really totally forget, you just like lose the location in your brain. So it's kind of like when you're in the house and you set something down. When you're young, you simply remember where you put it. When you're older, you know you put it down, you're just not sure where. And you kind of go through your house looking from corner to corner and corner, did I leave it here? Oh, that's where I left that thing. Oh, okay, different memory. You know, and you go around and you find what you can find. So as our mothers age, they go through the natural process of aging. And we, as God's people, are required by God and should do it because of love, that we should be gracious to them and understanding with them as they age. Now, I managed to dodge one of those curses that most mothers put on their children, where when I was young, my mother said, I hope when you get older, you have a child just like you. Well, by God's grace, I didn't have any child, so I dodged that bullet. But when I look back at my life, there are not a large number of regrets, but the lion's share of the regrets in my life all exist before the age of 21 from the day I was born again. And those regrets are usually from the age of 21 to about 13. And it was during those years of my life that I was rebellious and I was the kind of child that made every mother cry, probably responsible for a large portion of my mom's prayers. In fact, after getting saved, when I was just amazed with God's patience with me, that he waited so long for me. By all statures, I should have been dead at least six times before I got to 21, but God waited. And I remember pressing him because I wanted to know why. I said, Lord, what is it? Why would you wait for me? Why did you preserve my life? Why didn't you let me go off into eternity without you? Why did you wait? And he gave me a vision of my mother praying and weeping for my soul. And he said, I heard the prayers of your mom. And I put up a barrier to keep you from stepping off into the other side. Mothers, do not underestimate the power of your prayers when you pray for your children, God hears. And prayer isn't like Amazon. They don't get it to you the next day. It can happen that way. But more often than not, prayer is a force that puts in motion. And it never stops applying force until it accomplishes what it's purpose to do. So mothers here, or if you're watching online, if you have children that are wayward or don't know the Lord and you're praying for them, don't lose heart. Don't stop praying. Recognize that God will come through. I'm going to share with you a story, and there's two points I'm going to make today. The first point is what we ought to do for our moms, and the second point is the mother's power of prayer. And I'm going to share with you a true life story of a mother's power of prayer that was so potent, so incredible, it, just, it, almost, it is almost beyond comprehension, but it actually happened. There was a man named Peter Richley. And he lived in, in, in the early 1800s. It was 1820. And he took, as it were, a, a ship. And he was leaving England, or basically from there, and he was heading down to Australia. In the process, his ship sank. 
When his ship sank, it went down in the water. Another ship came to rescue him. He was the sole survivor. That rescue ship that he was on began to go in the direction of Australia, and then it sank. Now, I don't know about you. Have any of you ever been in the ocean, most people? Have you ever been in the deep ocean where you're out and you can't see land, and the idea that sharks could be under your feet? Have you ever, anybody ever been there? Now, I scuba, so I like the ocean, but I remember when I got caught in currents one time, and I came up, and I looked off in the horizon, and the only thing I could see for the boat was this little dot about two miles away, and I'm out there all by myself, and I thought, I'm fish food. <laughs> and I didn't have enough air to go underwater because they usually won't eat you on water, but when you're above water, you become food. Nevertheless, one shipwreck would be scary, but the ship that rescued him, it sank again, and another ship came and rescued him. And then that ship sank again, and another ship came and rescued him. And this went on five times. So there are five ships at the bottom of the ocean from this man's journey. After the fifth ship sunk and he was swinging in the water, finally an ocean liner came by and the ocean liner was named Leeds after the city that it was launched out of. And they brought him up and it was a very big vessel and they weren't too far from his destination. So it looked like he was going to make it. When they brought him on board, of course, he was dehydrated, been out in the sun. He needed to be resuscitated, cared for it. They brought him up and they cared for him and they put him, got him back to normal life and they approached him and they asked him a question. They said, hey, we have an unusual request. Would you be willing to comply with it? And he said, well, you saved my life. How can I say no? And he said, well, on this ship, we have an old lady who's lost her mind. She's in fever so bad she can't see straight. And all she keeps saying is, oh God, let me see my son before I die. And that was her only things she kept saying and they said would you pretend to be her son so that she can have peace in the last moments of her life and he said well you've saved my life it's the least I could do for you and he walks into the room and he looks at the woman in the bed and she turns around and she looks at him and he just began to break and weep because it was his mom and she had been praying fervently that her son that she would get to see him she had not seen him in 10 years now Coincidence is a word that does not exist in Hebrew, but it exists in our modern vernacular. And many times when God's at work in our lives, something happens and the enemy will come and say, eh, it's coincidence. But as the coincidences begin to stack, maybe the first ship, coincidence. Maybe the second ship, coincidence. Maybe even the third ship, coincidence. But we had a fourth ship and a fifth ship. And all those times that he was treading water out in the open sea, and there were plenty of sharks, I'm sure, swimming, looking for food, but didn't see him for food, God's hand was preserving that man's life. When the woman heard her son's voice, she began to get well. The fever began to break, and she was reunited with her son. Prayer changes things. We, as a church, as a people, and I don't mean us at FACF, I mean us as the church of Jesus Christ across this nation. If we ever woke up to the power that exists when we bend our knee and we begin to ask God to intercede for our behalf, when we begin to say, God, I need your help, please help me, we would change this world in a minute because prayer is a powerful thing that we're given. And moms, I know as you get older, you know, your role begins to become diminished. It begins to become changed. It begins to become moved. In other words, you become the default babysitter when the babysitter quits. You become, as it were, the person that they come to when they have problems. If there's a fight in the marriage of the child, they come home to the older mom. She has to listen to all the problems and, you know, and, and, and can use some of her wisdom. But moms, trust me, you know how to pray. If you've raised children, you've been at home, when your heart was out on the road and you had to bend a knee and say, God, get my child home, keep them safe. Moments when you didn't know if they were okay. Moments when you didn't know if you were going to be one of those mothers that buries their child. In those times when you prayed and you began to ask God, God doesn't just command the heavens. He is the commander of the angels of armies, armies of angels, just from the highest angels of the archangels down to the cherubims, to the messenger angels, to the, all kinds of things. All of creation obeys him, and he's your dad. If we don't ask, 
We have no reason to complain when we don't have. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask big. You know, he talked about how his mom believed in him. And you know, in life, having somebody believe in you makes all the difference in the world. You know, as a young man, um, I came into this world with a mother who was a paralegal for the assistant district attorney. When I was younger, I just considered it lucky coincidence. Now that I'm a little older and I understand that my mom put her job on the line so that I wouldn't go to jail, I realized I had to be born into a family with a mom who worked for the assistant district attorney so that I wouldn't be in a prison ministry. God knows what he's doing. And I'm so thankful that he gave me a praying mom. And I'm so thankful that she took time to pray for me. I didn't give much hope. My life did not indicate that there was any hope. I can even remember one time as a young man listening to my mom weep as she talked to my father, saying how she wasn't worried about my sister Angela or my brother Mike. But she would just cry. She said, but I don't know what's going to happen with John. And you know, when I heard her, I never realized how much pain I caused her. You see, we're not islands. Our actions have consequences, and others feel the results of our choices. So we need to make them carefully. I uh, want to share some things with you that are ways you can honor your mom, and I want to encourage you to do it, especially if God has been so gracious that you still have your mom with you. I know some of you, your mom's gone before you and gone to the other side. And if she's a believer, you can rest in the fact that you will be reunited with her. But if your mom is still with you here, then you can apply these things. One, love her unconditionally. She's going to say mean things. That's what moms do. It's because she loves you. It's okay. Get past it. Don't hold on to a grudge. Forgive them. How many moms do we have here? Can everybody that's a mom stand up? Everybody. If you've had a baby, stand up. And I know there ain't no men in here. Okay, let's give them a big hand. All right. If you're here with your mom or your mom is here with you, give her a hug. Hug your mom regularly. Just give her a hug. I know even if it's not what your family does and it's uncomfortable, if it's, if it's something that, you know, maybe you feel you're too mature for it, don't feel that way because, you know, the truth is the days you have with your mom, they're limited. They're numbered. And cherish the ones God gives you. And if you... If you grew up in a New England family or your culture is such that you don't say that you love you, but it's, it's just not a New England thing. We know people love each other, but we don't really tell people. In fact, the first time I came into church and some brother in the Lord came up and told me they loved me, I thought he was trying to be inappropriate. I wanted to punch him until I began to understand that, well, that's normal. I was the abnormal, but that was normal. So even if you don't do it, tell your mom you love her, even if it's uncomfortable. Believe me, she wants to hear it. And even if it's uncomfortable, it will get more comfortable because it's what you're meant to do. Understand her. You don't have to agree with her. If she's upset with something that you did or something that she thinks you should do differently, you don't need to win an argument with your mom. Just understand why she's upset. And try to help her not be upset. Five. Listen attentively. When she talks, she's lived longer than you. She probably knows you better than you know yourself. She remembers your little habits from before you were five years old that you used to do that still reflect through your personality today and smiles and probably doesn't bring it to your attention because she raised you. Help her cheerfully. Don't be, oh, I got to go help mom. Go help her cheerfully. If she needs help with something, help her because you love her, because you honor her, 
because you want your days to be long in the land because God wants you to honor her. Let me tell you how much God wants you to honor your mom. God has such a respect for moms. It's so deep and so powerful. that One of the very first curses almost that came was if a woman couldn't bear a child, they were considered barren because it was considered a curse not to become a mom in the Old Testament when the covenant was to be fruitful, multiply the earth. Now, we got 7 billion people here. I'm not sure that a command still applies. We've done a pretty good job at populating the world. Now, at the same time, God honored that so much that when he entered the world, he was very careful on who he selected to be his mom. And when he picked Mary, he told her that she was blessed among women. She was a virgin. She had never been with a man. And he came, and he, he came into her being and literally came into the world through her. He didn't have to enter the world by a woman. He could have came with a lightning bolt. He's God Almighty. He could spit in the dearth, create mud, and call it a human, and a human would exist. But it was important to him to come into the world in the ordinary way, sort of ordinary, I guess the immaculate conception is not really ordinary, but let's just say basically in the ordinary way. Now, he honored his mom so much that even though we can see where he was probably a little annoyed with her, when he was 12 and she was looking for him and he was busy doing his father's business. And, you know, in the magnitude of the universe and the order of business that was required for the universe to do, his mom's request probably seemed kind of, well, infantile to him, even at the age of 12. But nevertheless, he honored her. Later on, we read in the story, which David shared in the message about, you know, where they were having a wedding and basically they ran out of wine and Mary approached Jesus and said, we have no wine. And his response was, woman, what do I have to do with you? My hour has not yet come. In other words, don't bother me. But just like every mother knows her child, she knew Jesus. She knew that he was pushing back, but she knew that if she made the request, he would honor her. So he just, she just ignored what he said, looked at the, the servants and said, do whatever he tells you to do. Because she, she knew that he would. Now, I don't know why. I mean, God may have done it because he felt bad about her missing her wedding because of him. I don't know. But he loved his mother, and he honored her so much. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk, and people wonder why the Apostle John, if you're reading the Gospel of John, you'll notice that he, he constantly makes reference to himself as the Apostle whom Jesus loved. So if you're reading the Gospel of John, and you see where he says, and the Apostle who Jesus loved... John's talking about himself there. And we wonder, well, why does he always say that? Jesus had loved all of his apostles. But John had a special revelation of understanding how loved he was. And in that sense that I believe John had a greater grasp of love in that sense, when Jesus had to pick among them who he was going to have look after his mother, he chose John. And it was so important to him that while he was in the most important deed of his life, which was hanging on the cross, bleeding and suffering, carrying my sin, carrying your sin. He found it to break out time in the few grasps of air that he had to speak out and say to John, this is your mother, mother, this is your son. He wanted to make sure that she was going to be okay, which indicates that Joseph had already gone to be with the Lord. But it was that important to him that his mother was taken care of. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. God cares about how you treat your mom and dad. And there are no loopholes. There is no scripture that says, honor your father and mother if they deserve it. Because some of you may have mothers and fathers that aren't so wonderful, that maybe don't deserve to be honored. Honor them anyways. There's no loophole. There's no where it says, honor your mother and father if they deserve it. Some mothers and fathers, I hear stories and I think, wow, they should be killed, not honored. But the word of God tells us that we're supposed to honor our mother and father. In other words, we're supposed to fulfill our end of the obligation. We are supposed to do what God wants. And when we do what God wants, well, there's no other way to say it except this. Our life is better. The greatest lie of the devil is that when you do things your own way, that your life is better. I'm here to tell you the truth. If you do it your way, it's worse. If you do it God's way, it's always better. God knows who we are. He cares for us. He watches over us. 
And this is a Sunday where we celebrate mothers. And I'm very thankful for my mom, who I still have with me, praise God. And I got a chance to visit her recently and see her. And it's just not, not long enough. I wish she lived closer. But you know what? God is gracious. If he's given you a mom, don't take it lightly. If your mom has gone to be with the Lord, rejoice. You'll be with her shortly. And I'm not prophesying your death. It's just a matter of the fact that we live forever. And if you live what we would consider a long life on earth, like 100 years, it's still just a grain of sand on the beach of time that you're going to live. No matter how old you are, friends, brother, sister, you are young. You've just begun to live. Enjoy life. Life is about the people you interact with. It's not about the things or what you accomplish or what you do in life. All those things are important, but they're not as important of how you treat other people. But in today is Mother's Day. So let's remember our moms. Let's remember them in our prayers. Let's help them. Moms don't easily ask for help because they're ones used to giving the help. You know, um, you'd think as a preacher, I wouldn't hear many criticisms of other preachers. However, it's not true. As a preacher, I hear constant criticisms about other preachers. And I always try to hesitate to jump in even if I agree with them being wrong. Because from them comes the words of life. And I don't know these preachers, whether they're on TV. I can watch their words, agree or disagree. But they're a person that God has given to this earth to speak the words of life, to give life to people. And you know, moms are the same way. They're the nurturers of life. They give life. When a child falls down and breaks their knee, it hurts their knee, they rarely want to see dad. They want to see mom. Because God uses moms to bring forth the nurturing issue of life. And we should honor our mothers. Not just today, but every day of the year. I'm glad that we took this modern tradition 108 years ago when the president made it a formal holiday. I'm glad. A little late, but nevertheless, I'm glad. Let's remember it. Let's be patient. Let's be loving. Let's be caring. Your children, if you have children, will learn how to love you by the way you love your parents. So love your parents dearly. And chances are most of your children will love you dearly as well. Talk bad about your parents in front of your kids <laughs> well, let's just say that's a seed you don't need to plant. God is good. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for all the wonderful moms in this place here, those that couldn't make it today because they're out on outings or doing things with their family. I pray that it would be a blessed day for them, God. Lord, I pray that you help each of us not neglect that privilege that we can go into your throne room, that we can boldly make our requests known that we can talk to you and that you promise you will talk to us if we listen. God, I pray for my mom. I pray that you bless her abundantly, Lord. She did not deserve me. But you blessed her and kept her and preserved her anyways, Lord. I'm thankful, Lord, for your hand. I'm thankful for your kindness. God, I pray that you bless all the mothers of this church, that you give them extra strength, wisdom, insight, wisdom that comes from you as the Ancient of Days, Lord that they can pass it on to their children. Help us as a society, Lord, to venerate our elderly, much like it's done in Asia and most places, Lord, even Africa, many countries in the Arab nations, they, they venerate their old. America is one of the few places that we shove our old in assisted living and nursing homes, and no offense if you have to put your parent in that place, but God help them, minister to them, Help us, O oh God, to revere them and to, to respect them because they've given so much for us. Thank you, Jesus, for just being who you are, being the ever-present help in a time of need. And thank you for giving us moms for when we needed somebody visible to give us a hug, to band-aid a spruce knee, to help us with our broken hearts. God, you are so good. 
and you're good all the time and you're here in our midst. Bless the mothers today and let our celebration of our mothers be wonderful, rememberable, and something the mothers cherish in Jesus' name. And before I just dismiss, I just want to just, I would be amiss if I didn't say this. If you're watching today or you're here today, and Jesus is just a biblical character to you that lived 2,000 years ago, and you don't really know him as your risen Savior. There's no greater gift that you could give your mom on Mother's Day than to give your heart to Jesus Christ. He wants to be your Savior. But to save you, you first have to realize that you need to be saved. And in order to realize that, you have to understand that there is a, there is a sin. There is sin that we all have. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, then the truth is not in us. It doesn't even exist within us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. In other words, we need to be saved from our sins because the payment for sins is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So once we tell him we're sorry for our sins, and I don't know how to explain this to you, and I don't know if this is true for everybody, but it was for me. The first time I told God I was sorry for my sins was the first time in my life that I felt clean. Outside, inside, the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I knew I was clean. And I wasn't clean by a normal, natural means, but I was clean by the blood of the Lamb that completely removes everything. OxyClean don't have anything on the blood of Jesus. <laughs> he is the best. So if you've never repented, if you've never said, Lord, I'm a sinner, I need your help, I don't wanna live in sin, I wanna live right, and I got news for you, you won't be perfect. Your desire to be perfect will be in your heart, but your, your mortality and your corruption will limit you. And God gives you grace for that to keep you, to carry you through, because he's a gracious God and a merciful God of love. The only regret that I have in my life, the greatest regret is that I didn't come to know the Lord sooner. But God knows what he's doing. And maybe I wouldn't be so in love if I hadn't had such a mountain of sins forgiven. And maybe you haven't been that bad. Maybe you just, you know, feel like you don't need a lot forgiven. If you feel that way, I'm, I, and I don't mean this in a bad way, I just mean it in a way to encourage you. You've never really been that close to God. Because I don't care how holy you are, how good you are, when you really get close to his presence, his presence is so holy that no matter how well you're living with God, no matter how much you're praying, no matter how much you're fasting, no matter how much you're resisting sin at every turn, you feel so unworthy in his presence because he is so holy. He is without spot, he is without blemish, and he makes no mistakes, including you. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. That is a lie of the devil. You are designed and planned. In fact, the Bible says that before God made the world, he had you in mind. So if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Ask him into your heart. Ask him to help you repent. Find some waters. Get baptized in Jesus' name. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Enjoy the power of God. Live in the joy of God. That is God's desire for us. He said that our joy may be full and complete. I don't know about you, but I don't want partial joy. I want the whole deal. Give me the full dose. I want the whole capsule. Give me all that joy I can get. And that's what the Bible promises us. Thank you for coming out on Mother's Day. I trust you'll enjoy our celebration. You are dismissed. Oh, oh, not yet. Okay, hold on. Brother Odell has something. Hold on. All right. It has been a tradition of the Philippine American Christian Fellowship to honor our mothers. Um, almost 22 years ago uh, when this church has began we also began the fact that we would like to honor our mothers in the church um, there's a church in uh, Indiana um, it's the first I believe it's the first Baptist church of Indiana under Dr. Dwight L. Moody uh, he was asked one time and says, you know, why is your church was so big? Why is it like it was so successful? Why is uh, so many uh, uh, people are coming to your congregation? They actually have like a thousand children in their Sunday school every Sunday. Plus they have like three services 
And all their churches, like when I went there, it's like all their, their buildings, uh, the rooms has a television because the church was so big that the main auditorium, because it's an old church, could not contain all the people that are coming there. And when he was interviewed and asked the, that question, uh, Dwight Al Moody just bring those people who were asking that question into a room. And when he opens the room, he says, this is why. There were like a bunch of mothers, ladies in their knees, praying, not only for the church, but for the community, for the world, for all the people to understand and know that they need God. And sometimes we minimize our, you know, our, our importance when we say that, oh, well, we're all, you know, I cannot go visitation anymore, or I, I'm, not, I'm not good in talking. Uh, you know, uh, those who were born in, uh, in the past, it's like uh, we are not really very open to talking to people. But mom, you have a power. And that power is when you are on your knees. You can pray for the, uh, for the salvation of many. You can pray for your children. You can pray for the church. You can pray for your pastors. We need your prayer. So even though you think that you don't have anything anymore that is significant, I was going to say to you that you are wrong because you can pray and that prayer will be answered by God. So here in Philippine American Christian Fellowship, we would like to honor you and to thank all the mothers who comes today. Uh, at first, we would like to call all the mothers to please come over here at front. And please line up right here. All the mothers. If you're a mother, please. Ah. All right, compress a little bit. All right, get closer. Amen. Go and take a picture. But, uh, also, I would like to ask all the men and all the children, if you are a child and your mom is here or not here, please uh, pick up one of the flowers from the back. Yeah. Oh, they're all in the back? Yeah. Oh, man. Come on, man. And... Young children and old children. This is a gift from Philippine American Christian Fellowship to honor you, to thank you for all the things that you've done. In, in obedience to what God has commanded us to do. I hope we have enough flowers for everybody. <laughs> I bought 70 of them. <laughs> yeah. Kids, good. Good, good to hear, Mom. All moms have flowers. Don't miss your flowers. <laughs> All right. Everybody got flowers? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, really. okay. We're supposed to have seven. We're supposed to have seven. All right. Well, let's take a picture of all the moms. Please come from. And we're going to pray for you. And not only that, mom, listen. Today, it's your day off. Mom, listen to me. Today is your day off. So that means no cooking, no cleaning, no nothing doing in the church. All the men, all the men will be doing all the job. You will be sitting, you will be served, and all the men will be doing the service and cleaning and washing the dishes. Amen? So, all men. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, oh, le let's clear it a little bit, guys. Let's clear it. Let's take a big picture of all the mom. Guys, back, back up a little bit. Copy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, come fresh. Ladies, come fresh. We, we need a picture.